Hello everyone and thank you very much for watching. This is me Mr. P and welcome back to another episode of Proxmox Home Server Series. In this video I will show you how you can deploy Docker containers from GitHub repo using Portana. So let's begin. For this video I have a simple Proxmox server running with just one LXC container which is hosting Docker. And inside this LXC container I have Portana running. So how to use Portana to deploy Docker containers from GitHub. For this video, I'm going to use my own GitHub repo called Galaxy Home Lab. I created this about, I created this two weeks ago to start adding all the stuff that are run in my home lab. So you are more than welcome to visit this Git repository and use any of these Docker Compose files. I'm going to try to keep this up to date with most recent stuff that I'm running inside my home lab and all the configurations that I've done for all the containers that I gave you demo before and what I'm planning to do in the future. So for this video, we will use WordPress Docker Compose file to run this. If I navigate to Docker, WordPress and Docker Compose file, this is a Docker Compose file to initiate WordPress and a WordPress database. One thing you will probably notice straight away that there is a lot of variables added like for example this one dollar sign wordpress host port dollar sign in a docker compose file means that this is a variable name and this and there is a common practice to add the all caps and name for the variable so this will represent wordpress host port this variable or this variable sorry will represent wordpress db user wordpress db password wordpress db name and so on and so on. So first thing, how to how to get this running in my Docker instant without doing any copy pasting? Well, it's going to be a one copy paste, but without copying all this. I'm going to go back into my Portana, select on a home, select on a Portana instant and click stack. Then I need to click on the big blue button which it says plus add stack. And now I have four options. I can use web editor, which we used before. It's basically just copy paste Docker compose file in here, do a bit of tweaking and press the button and off you go. You have a Docker container running. You can upload directly from a, from a computer, select the Docker compose file, or you can run a custom templates. That's another feature we're going to discuss in our upcoming videos. But in this video, we're going to use repository. And what repository does is you link the portainer to a specified to a specific git repo that you will specify that's a lot of words of specific, specific words you will specify what git repo you want to use to deploy that specific container first thing i'm going to give it a name so i'm going to name it wordpress like that then i choose repository and then i need to choose will i need authentication or is authentication required for this git repo or, or not if i choose on i need to specify my git username and as token that is created for that user to access that private Git repo. I'm going to turn that off as I'm going to use my public Git repository. Next thing, it says repository URL. I need to specify the repository URL. So what I will do, I'm going to click on this. I'll click on the name of my Git repo. I'll click on the big green button. Yours might be changed by the time you're watching. And I need to copy HTTPS URL from here. If I copy that, go back to Portana and paste that in. Next, I need to reference the, uh, the, uh, the branch. It says here that if not specified, we'll use the default head reference normally is main. If I click on my repo, as you can see, it says main here. So I don't need to specify anything because Portina will automatically, will pay, or Portina will automatically pick main as the right branch. So I'm going to leave that empty. And next, compose path. In here, I need to specify which compose file I want to run. So if I go back to my repository, click on a Docker, select a WordPress, and this is a file I'm going to run. So if I'm going to click on that, it says Docker, WordPress, Docker Compose YML. Go back into Portana, go at the start of this and write Docker, WordPress. So Docker slash WordPress slash Docker Compose YML. Exactly what I see here. From here all the way. That's what we need to copy or type into the Portana. Next, I can add additional paths if I want to. The Git Ops update. This is very, very interesting feature. If I switch that on, what it does is automatically will query the Docker Compose file from specified Git repository and check for any changes. And if the changes are detected, it will automatically recreate the container. 
I leave that as five minutes. Other things, as you can see, business features, business features, we're going to skip that. We will say skip TLS verification. Enabling this will allow skipping TLS verification. I'm just going to leave that off. Next, we need to add environment. To simplify this process, if I go back to WordPress, I created a .env file for you to copy and paste. So I copy all that and all this is containing everything that Docker Compose file needs to run. So if I go back to Portana, I can click on here and keep adding them in or I click on advanced mode and just paste that in. And now I need to just fill or fill this information. WordPress DB user, Mr. P. WordPress DB password will be password. What is DB name? Will be Word, WordPress MySQL root password. Let's say password the same. Obviously, you need to specify much more secure passwords than just writing password. WordPress data. WordPress data is where the data will be stored. So I'll go back to my container inside the Proxmox. Let's see what we have. If I go to uh, home, we have Mr. P. Oh, yeah, I can change to user Mr. P. Then user Mr. P navigates to his home folder. And now inside here, I'm going to make directory. Let's call it WordPress. Do I have enough storage in this? Uh, yes, I do. That will be fine. So right now I created a folder called WordPress. I navigate to WordPress and I will create another folder, which is called data and another folder, which we're going to call it DB. PWD is print working directory. I'm just need to copy this, right click and copy, go back into my portain and say, okay, WordPress data will be stored in here. DB data will be stored in here and WordPress host port. If I navigate to my repository, let's go and double check exactly why it's required. As you can see, it says here, port 80 is on a container side and WordPress host port is on the host side. I made this to be variable because maybe you already have something that is running on port 80. Maybe you have something that runs on port 8080. So you just need to specify what you want to use as a host port. As this is the second container that will run inside this instant, I am happy to say that I can, let's say, do 8080. It's going to be my port. Scroll down and click deploy the stack. And what's happening now, Portainer connects to a GitHub public repo, pulls the Docker Compose file from that repository, checks against the environment file that you can upload or you can specify in this list. So I specified all the values in this list. For example, as you can see here, key equals value. So key is WordPress DB user and a value is Mr. P and so on and so forth. And right now is going and pulling the Docker Compose file from a public repository, filling the missing information using this list. And once everything is done, the container will be deployed. It's taking some time because it needs to download all the Docker image for WordPress and all the Docker image for database. So once both are running, I'll be back and I'll show you what to do. Uh, it's already been done. So uh, what's happening now? If I click on a stack, there's an option that says WordPress. I click on a WordPress. And right now, if I scroll down a bit, I can see that both containers are running. If I click on this port, I do believe it will open. Here we go, WordPress instant. Let's actually go and fill this in. Let's do UK as I live in UK. Site name will be the Mr. P YT. Username will be Mr. P. Password will be password. It says weak. Yes, I'm fine to use a weak. Obviously, in your case, please do not use a weak password for your WordPress. And this is going to be speak to Mr. P at gmail.com. And discourage. Yeah, that's fine. Discourage. So, password Mr. P. Install the WordPress. So WordPress installed, I'm going to click on login, username Mr. P, password, enter. And I'm logged in on a WordPress. Yes, that's fine. Let's click on the top and here we go. I have a fully running WordPress website that I am ready to go and tweak around and make it work. Everything is runs fine. If I go up a bit, as you can see from the advanced mode, although this filled in, Portina just went and created all this list for me. So now let's talk about this option, which is called GitOps update. Every five minutes, Portainer will query this Docker Compose file, which is located in this repository, and will check if there is any changes. And if there is any changes, it will go and update. GitOps will make sure that your Docker Compose file is always running up to date. We're using polling instead of a webhook. 
So right now it's set to five minutes. Let's change that. I think you can 30 seconds. Oh no, it says one minute. Here we go. Let's do one minute. So I'm going to say save, pull and redeploy. Let's change the names of these containers. I'll go back to my Git repo. And while I'm open, while I'm viewing the Docker compose YML file for WordPress, I'll click on a pencil and I'll say, instead of saying WordPress, I'm going to say WordPress website. And when it says WordPress DB, I will delete that database like that. Commit the changes. Yeah, that's fine. So files being changed. So right now Docker compose file specifies that this container name should be WordPress web website. And this Docker container name should be WordPress database. If we go to Portana, the both of them still showing the old name, but what happens after one minute elapses, the Portana will query. And if the Docker compose file changed, it will pull a new one. So let's refresh. Let's see if that's changed. It still says WordPress and WordPress contain uh, DB. Let's actually go to containers and let's refresh this one. So we need to wait right now for less than a minute. Here we go. As you can see, this one already changing. So the database is changing already and it's changing first because the WordPress website depends on DB. So once this is fully running, then the another the the second container, the WordPress website container will be created. So let's go back to this. Let's refresh. Actually, as you can see, it's changed. So right now it says website WordPress database and War WordPress website. And it's very useful when you tweaking the Docker compose file and the your Docker or Portainer will reflect the changes. It's not ideal to deploy containers from public public repositories that you don't have a control of. For example, if you go and you find a very, very useful Docker container that you want to deploy, and if you will deploy the Docker container using Portainer stack and then repository, and if you don't want the, your container to start messing about every minute or so, obviously the GitOps update, I suggest you turn this off. But what if you're setting up a Docker container or Docker compose file inside Git repo, and you want to deploy that to 10 different instances, 20, 30, 100. You have all these Portainer instances running across the world and you have only one Docker Compose file that will control all of them. So you can change the source, you can change the Docker Compose file inside your Git repo. The change will get reflected to all the Portainer instances as long as you have a Git Ops update added. And that's it. This is pretty much how you deploy Docker containers using Git repository via Portainer. What if you want to use a public repository to set up the Docker container initially, set up Docker container using the Git repositories via Portainer, but then later you want to get them detached from a Git repo. Don't worry, there is, a, there is an answer to that. If I click on a stacks and click on a WordPress, Everything with the WordPress is running. Everything is great. I, if I click on this link on the port, I do get access to my WordPress website. I done a little quick uh, Q and A to see if everything runs as I want. I can detach these two containers or this stack, the WordPress stack from Git repo and keep it almost like a locally. I can amend locally to do that. I need to navigate to stacks, click on a stack that I want to detach from a Git repo. And then there is a button that says detach from Git. If I click on that and it says, do you want to detach the stack from Git? Yes, I want. And it's asking you, do you want to redeploy? I say yes. And I'm just going to turn that on just to make sure the most recent coming in. Boom. That's it. What Portina did is it captured all the Docker Compose uh, file content and all the variables and straight away created the Docker containers based on that Docker Compose file in the old fashioned way by editor. As you can see, this is all added in here and I have all the variables still showing up here. But if I scroll down, the variable shows up here as well. And right now under stacks, WordPress is no longer linked to a Git repo. So by changes happening inside the Docker compose file inside, for example, WordPress repository, if I click here inside here, if for example, I will go and I will mess around with this Docker Compose file and you will have auto update on. Obviously, my changes will be reflected on your system. But if you don't have auto update on, obviously it won't. But 
for initial setup, you can use this, what I just gave you in this video, you can use this approach. You do initial setup, you test around, everything is working fine. You click the button detach from a Git and you have the Docker containers running in the old fashioned way or they as almost like they were set up in the old fashioned way. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.